the things I think. Hi, my name is Sarah. This is my life in LGBT awareness vlog. Welcome to Discussions with Hayden. This is part one, which includes his coming out story, the way he grew up, what he thinks about it being genetic versus environmental, and some gay stereotypes that really bother us. Hi guys, welcome to The Things I Think. So I know I've been doing a lot of lesbian topics lately, and so I've decided I want to branch out and do some transgender, bisexual, gay, all those things. So I brought Hayden here today, and we're going to talk about what it's like to be a gay male. So do you identify as a gay male, like, as in general? Most days. Did you always know that you were gay? I don't think I did. When I was younger, I had a lot of crushes on women. And when I finally came out to my mom, my mom said, no shit. And then my dad said, I've known since you were two. So apparently everyone else knew but me. How did that feel for people to know before you? It was kind of cool that it wasn't a big deal. Many members of my family are gay on both sides of my family. So they kind of went through the whole, um, you know, like dramatic coming out thing in the 80s. So, 80s, wow. Yeah, yeah. so they've <laughs> that's already that's had all time. that, like, they've had, like, 30, they'd had 30 years to get adjusted to the idea and to really think about it. Uh, so it, it wasn't a big deal at all when I came out. That Everyone was just like, whatever, like, duh. That's super nice. That's mm -hmm. super nice. So, you said it's in your family, so do you feel like it's possibly a genetic type of thing? Oh, okay, it's definitely a genetic trait. Okay, let me explain. So I've got... Name. Name. My mom's side. And they have been gay forever. They have two kids. They're like the total, total stereotypical lesbians because like one's got her master's in math and the other's got her master's in science. And they're like, the babies can't eat anything unhealthy. And they're in a softball league. Yeah, they're in a gay softball league. And Name. And a softball coach. So it's like, you know, why not? Um, and then my grandma actually came out a few years after what? Uh, my grandpa died. And she told us last, she thought my mom would be the most upset. And mom was like, Jesus Christ, I thought you had cancer. Like, why couldn't you have told me this less dramatically? <laughs> and we were like, you know, whatever, Grandma, you do you. Like, it ain't a big deal. Mm. And on my, my dad's side of the family, we have um, Aunt Paul. We have Aunt Paul. Who, who, like, her best friend is Aunt Name. Kim, right? right? I've never had any evidence to suggest that they're romantically involved, but they have been, like, the same person for 30-plus years. They have been, like, best friends. So um, they are together? Um, they're, like, I believe the term is heterosexual life partners. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Yeah, One of my cousins just came out. He turned 14. There's been a long history of non-traditional love in my family, and we're judgmental about other things, like rich people, but we're not so judgmental about the whole love thing. It's like, love whoever you want, do whatever you want. So you said it was like genetic, you think it's, it's genetics, but you say, you're you saying that you've grown up around gay people. You've been familiar with it. Yes, so, yes. Do you so, think it's all environmental as well? Or do you I think, think it's a little bit of both. I would never argue that it's 100% genetic or 100% environmental. I think it's equally both, and the, the mix is different for everyone involved. And for every separate case, it's a little bit unique. How you doing? Uh-huh. Yeah, she agrees. I think that it is definitely genetic that so many people in my family came to the conclusion independently. And it wasn't as if any one of them just decided, like, you know, my older sister's gay and I want to be gay too. It was everyone came out independently of each other. And, like, my sister is not gay. She's kind of like a really dykey straight person. But that's fine, you know? Like, non-conformity to gender stereotypes, you know? That's how we do it. I was raised around gay people who were extraordinarily normal. Okay, I understand. I was not raised around any sort of extreme stereotype, nor was I raised to be judgmental of someone who is extremely, you know, like, masculine, feminine. It's, that, that sort of thing was not something I was brought up to care about. I was brought up to care about how a person is inside and how their actions define who they are. Uh, I grew up in a really, really, really tiny town in Kansas, and it's, it's very much like lots of white people, you know what I mean? They treated us really well. We had a lot of dirty laundry aired in that town between our family. There, there were just no gay people there. And it was not considered okay to be gay by the rest of the town. And you know, that's like the Midwest. I'm sorry if you live in the Midwest. I've been there. I know how it feels. When I moved to the East Coast, I started going to a performing arts high school, and there was so much gayness. <laughs> Like, it was not a big deal. It was a bigger deal. Uh, people people got really mad about homophobia at my high school. And, you know, if you in, in arts programs, there are going to be a lot of gay people. So at a high school devoted to the arts, there are going to be a lot of gay people. 
And there were. <laughs> um, and, you know, some of them were, like, super extreme, dressing in, like, fabric they tore off their couch. And some of them were very much, like, driving the tractor. And everyone is just so varied and different. And I grew up with a certain way of thinking about gay people from the places I was raised. And I went to a very um, rough middle school where those kinds of attitudes weren't encouraged either. What do you mean by the certain way of thinking? What was your way of thinking? Is that the way of thinking is that like a gay person, a gay man, you know, he always has the wrists with the flapping and his voice is flamboyant. very, very typical, very stereotypical, flamboyant, very high. Um, you know, the gay lisp. Gay lisp. You know the gay lisp? The frontal lisp? Um, I haven't actually heard of that one. Okay, so there's like a rule um, among some gay people that like you can tell a person is gay by their lisp. Oh. Uh, and when I was little, I had the frontal lisp. And people told me that because I had the frontal lisp, I was gay. And so I was like confused. And I was like, do I believe that because... This is what my list sounded like. I'm not trying to make fun of any list. This is what it, how I was speaking. And then I went through speech therapy to get my list corrected. And I'm still very conscious, self, self-conscious about that. Like, there's no reason why that needs to be a thing. Mm-hmm. And I have never heard of that. So perhaps it's not a lisp thing anymore. Maybe it's grown out of things. Yeah, like you never know. Yeah. Um, it's just, I find those stereotypes wildly inaccurate. 